everyone's feeling it right now, where it really feels like it's the 11th hour and there's a lot of people that are wondering, am I gonna be able to be ready when the time comes? When it's crunch time, will I have a place to go? When it comes to having a retreat location for yourself, there are many options that you can do on your own that don't cost that much money. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you two different approaches that I've created myself that didn't break the bank, I was able to do my own, and structures like this are able to provide people with a place to go if they ever need to get out of Dodge. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis it's late summer right now, and late summer is always a really important time of year from my perspective because it kind of commemorates something that is a really important moment in my life, and that was when I built my first house. Back several years ago when I was doing that build, uh, we put in the foundation over the, the summertime, and it wasn't until September 1st that I was able to start putting down the first boards. So no carpentry on that project started until September 1st, and by Christmas of that year, just a few months later, the house structure was basically up and we could move in and it was a shelter and it was a great feeling of accomplishment. And every single time I, I come to another late summer, I'm always invariably working on some kind of a building project. This uh, chicken coop behind me is the building project that I worked on uh, for this summer. Uh, it, it always reminds me of what is possible when you get to the end of the summer, the end of the season, when you know, you're looking fall and winter in the eyes and uh, you know you're at least if you're me, you realize, you know, it feels like, you know, my, my opportunity to, you know, do the building that I need to take the preparations that I need to take. It feels like that opportunity is over. It's passed me by because the whole summer has gone by and, you know, here we are, you know, the nights are starting to get a little bit cool and I, I feel like I've missed my chance. But I always remember back to that first building project when I didn't start the build until that 11th hour and it always gives me a lot of encouragement every year now this project is essentially done there's just a few more things that i need to do before all these little chickens uh, can move into it and i'm excited to uh, be at the end of it but i know for a lot of you guys uh, that's not the case where uh, you know whether you're doing a building project or you're just uh, getting into prepping and preparedness you know there can be a kind of 11th hour kind of feel to the moment right now where things in the world seem like they're uh, you know falling to pieces and i know for a lot of people that gives them kind of a sense of hope Hopelessness, that you know, you know, if things have been different, if I prepared in the past, you know, I, I, I could maybe face the challenges ahead of me, but uh, you know, it's just not possible at this point because we are at that 11th hour. It's just too late. And I wanted in this video to encourage you guys to you know reevaluate ideas like that because even when things feel like you know the entire building season is behind you and there's no time left before winter, or you know all the time for prep you know should have been in the past and there's not time to address these kind of issues now. Yes, things are always better when you can start sooner, but that doesn't mean that you can't make your situation in the future better if you were to at least start today because you know there could be a couple of years that go by and you'll be thinking back to this moment right now and thinking you know things felt like they were you know on the cusp and we were ready to fall off the cliff but you know there was more time there was more time that than I anticipated there was and if I just made some preparations back then you know two years from now you might be kicking yourself that you didn't start right now so I'd encourage you to reevaluate think about what your situation is and what little steps you can do because even if you are only even if you only have a week Having a week to prepare for, you know, something is better than, you know, waiting for that whole week to go by and then facing, you know, whatever that situation is without even that week's worth of preparation. For the rest of this video, what I want to do is uh, share with you a couple of structures that we have here on this property uh, that are pretty quick to put up. Uh, I mentioned that I've been working on this chicken coop over the summer, uh, but the reason it's been taking all summer is because, you know, I haven't really been focusing on it that intently. I've been, you know, doing other things and I, I put in like a couple hours a day on it. Um, if you're feeling like you're in a situation where you really want to get a retreat uh, location uh, set up for yourself, where you want to create some kind of a structure. Uh, I know the Canadian Prepper recently did a video about uh, a kit that he put together, and I'd highly recommend you checking out his video. Here's my video critique of his video, and you can link through to his video from there. Uh, you know, I had some issues with the way they put it up, but overall, I think it's 100% positive that people are taking some steps and doing something because doing something is always better than doing nothing and even if something in, in my humble opinion is imperfect you know it, it's a heck of a lot better than doing nothing uh, so what I'm going to be showing you is a couple of things that I'm I've been working on that you know it's not like building an entire prepper house but 
it would give you a great place to, uh, you know, survive if it was like, you know, hard winter. You could at least keep yourself warm and alive in these kind of structures. Uh, if it's raining, they're going to keep you dry uh, and they're going to give you a heck of a lot more than nothing. If your bug out plan is to just kind of head off into the woods and maybe if you're lucky, you got a tarp. Uh, you know, I do a lot of tent. I'm sorry, not a tarp, <laughs> a tent. Let's upgrade that tent, uh, that tarp to a tent. You know, if your idea is that you're just going to head out to the woods with a tent, I do a lot of tent camping, and, you know, it's rough. It can be awfully rough. It is so much more posh and cushy, even living in a chicken coop. So let's hop o over into some of these structures. I've got two structures that I want to share with you. And, you know, look at some of the basic things that you can do to set up something like this, because something like this, if you were going to work, you know, eight hours a day, ten hours a day on, on something along these lines, you get something like this done in... I feel like the chickens are going to bite me because I keep gesticulating. They don't like gesticulations. Um, you could get something like this done in a matter of weeks very, very easily. So let's hop up and we're going to look at some of the structures that I have been uh, creating. There are two structures that I want to show you. And the first one I want to show you is this chicken coop. And while a chicken coop may not sound appealing to live in, once you see the inside of the structure, I think that you'd feel that this would actually be a pretty nice place to stay as a you know, retreat location or even as like a little cottage for camping. Uh, as you can probably tell just by looking at it, the, it's not done. <laughs> I'm still working on it. I'm actually supposed to be working on the front door today. Uh, also the uh, gable ends of the roofs uh, of the roof uh, is just these little uh, blocks. But if we go inside, you're going to be able to see that it's, uh, it's pretty much together and it gives you a sense of, you know, how a structure like this can be pretty simply created. Now, obviously, again, this is a chicken coop. If you're going to build a little co uh, cabin or cottage for yourself, you're not going to need uh, these roosting bars <laughs> to perch from, and you're probably not going to need like, a little uh, chicken ladder ramp up to a chicken door. Uh, but the basic structure of something like this is a very simple way to build uh, you know, something that you could live in. Now this is built out of cinder blocks. The foundation is made out of cinder blocks. The foundation's dimensions are 8 feet by 12 feet. <laughs> Uh, this wall here is a 12 foot wall and then there's an 8 foot wall back there. We go a couple feet down into the ground with those cinder blocks uh, to get down below, uh, below the frost line. And the, the concrete foundation comes up to this level here and then it kicks down on this side because we're built into a hillside and it's lower on this side over here. Now uh, just over here is a good place to see the, the basic structure. Uh, on top of the foundation, uh, we put what's called a sill plate. And a sill plate is your union between the concrete foundation and the wooden structure that you have. And the sill plate goes all along the entire edge, everywhere where there's contact with concrete. And the way you attach that is when you're making the concrete foundation, you have these little pins stick up. Uh, they're uh, called anchor bolts, and uh, you drill holes through your anchor, uh, you drill holes through your sill plate and you bolt down your sill plate onto those, those anchor bolts. Uh, and once you have that wooden uh, top, then you can just build wood on top of that. The basic structure of this place is post and beam. There's a post right here. There's a five by five inch post uh, right there. And then there's the, uh, the rafter that goes from one side to the other. And then there's the corresponding post over on this side. And this is a very, very simple way to build structures is that you create your foundation, you put a sill plate on top of it, and then you attach posts. In this case, these are about three feet apart from each other. There's one post on one side that goes up, and then there's a corresponding post on the other side that goes up. And the way these posts are made is they've got a little notch at the top of them. Uh, it's kind of like a middle finger sticking up, and it gets pinched with these um, uh, roof rafters. I'm sorry, I can never remember the word roof rafter. It gets pinched between these two roof rafters. Uh, they're just uh, nailed in and there's also a an anchor bolt that goes into it to really uh, squeeze them all together. And uh, that's the basic uh, form of the structure is just posts and these beams. And you can make as many of these as you want. If you uh, wanted to make this structure much longer, you could. And I mentioned that this wall here is eight feet across and that this dimension here is 12 feet. Uh, now the eight feet is sort of uh, determined by the span that you can get uh, with these, again, <laughs> roof rafters. Uh, you know, if you have this uh, spread out too far, you know, you end up having to have posts in the middle. But if you want to not have any posts in the middle of your space, eight feet or, or even a little bit bigger than that, but I built this one eight feet, 
Uh, eight feet is a perfectly good span, and you could make a structure like this that's eight feet wide, but instead of 12 feet long, you could make it 24 feet long or 120 feet long. It could be like just a long tunnel. And in that way, you can customize the size of your structure. And you're not going to be risking making it structurally unsound because you're taking the same basic principle of a post on one side, and in this case, about eight feet over, a post on the other side. You've got your, my God, uh, roof rafter. You've got your roof rafter connecting the two of them. And that is the basic uh, form of the structure and you can just make it as, as long as you want. So I came in here because it's the current thing that I'm working on and I think it's a really good example of, uh, you know, a basic structure that can be built out of posts and beams. Post on one side, corresponding post on the other, sandwiched between, <laughs> roof rafters. The only other element that you'll see here uh, is this uh, little brace here. It's a little angle brace and that is to try to keep this angle here uh, from flexing like so that the roof, uh, the walls don't bend that way or bend this way. As long as you can keep this angle fixed it's going to make these walls really really rigid. So uh, this is one way of constructing a, uh, a very simple structure. Uh, something like this could be built uh, pretty quickly. And the other structure that I want to investigate is this one right over here across all of our chicken fences. Uh, this uh, structure over here, it was built as a shed, but it was also built such that it could be a tiny house. And there's actually both a loft in the top of this one and a basement in the bottom. So let's go over there and check it out. Okay, so I mentioned that this was built as a shed and primarily it was actually built in order to receive these solar hot water panels. When I was building our main house, we wanted to mount some solar hot water panels. I already knew I was going to put solar voltaic electric panels on the roof of the house and I needed a place to put these solar hot water panels and I figured if I was going to bother to build an entire scaffolding just to hold those up, why not just kind of box it in and make a shed underneath? So it's a little bit of extra work, but it gets a heck of a lot more functionality than just a basic scaffold to hold those up. So voila, we created this uh, storage shed. Uh, and in the, the same uh, mindset of thinking, well, if you're gonna build a scaffold, you might as well build a shed. I was thinking, well, if you're gonna build a shed, you may as well build a tiny house. And that's exactly what this is. I mentioned that it has both a basement and a loft. This structure here is a little bigger than the chicken coop. The chicken coop was eight feet by 12 feet. This structure is 10 feet by 14 feet. So it's 10 feet wide and 14 feet long. The 14 foot dimension is that one that I mentioned in the other structure would be the one that you could change to anything. The other structure was 12 feet, but you could equally make it 24 feet or 120 feet. This one is 14 feet long, but you could double that and make it uh, 28 feet or you could make it 140 feet. Obviously it's easy for me to double or multiply things by 10 in my head. Um, but you could make this thing as long in that direction as you want and it wouldn't lose any kind of structural stability. Uh, it has uh, 140 square feet on the inside because it's 10 feet by uh, 14 feet. And that's 100, that is 140 square feet on the main floor, 140 square feet in the basement area. And it's only a half basement, you'll see when we get in there. And then it's not quite 140 square feet because it's a little bit farther, a smaller footprint in the top, but you have a lot of room up in that loft area. So let's go in here and uh, explore what this structure is. Uh, uh, the way that this structure was put together. Again, this one also, just like the chicken coop, still has a little bit of work left to do, but it's totally functional at this point, and uh, you know, it would be totally livable at this point if you wanted to move into a structure like this. This one is a little bit different than the chicken coop uh, in that uh, the way that it was designed, the chicken coop just has posts on one side, and I, I apologize, all the posts are kind of blocked by storage. We are using it as a storage shed. Yeah, the chicken coop has posts on one side, and posts on the other side, and then those are directly connected to each other using uh, the uh, roof rafter. Uh, in this structure, we have roof rafters, but these go together in kind of an A-frame shape. So this one goes up and they meet uh, up at the apex, and then there's a second uh, set of roof rafters that go up and they meet up there. And because of that, we, instead of having a corner brace, we have this structure here, uh, this board, which goes from here, over to there. And uh, in architecture, this is referred to as a collar tie. It's tying this side of the eighth, uh, of the, the roof rafter in with the other side of the roof rafter, and it keeps them uh, pulled together so that they don't splay out. And we've got uh, 
uh, these collar ties, you know, uh, holding together all of the different roof rafters. Now, because of this uh, alternate approach, it's allowed us to have a whole attic space up there. And again, this is being used for storage because this was built as a storage shed. But if you were going to build this as a tiny house, you could put a bed up there. Uh, there'd be a lot of room for a bed. You could have, you know, a little uh, lamp next to you. There'd even be some extra storage space because the bed could be on this side. And then on this side over here, you could have some extra storage space, have a little ladder that goes up and down. Uh, but a structure like this is even more comfortable than the chicken coop, and not just because it is not built as a chicken coop, but because it has a little bit of extra space. Um, and it also has this basement down here. Uh, now I mentioned it's just a partial basement, but it really expands the amount of storage that we can have in here. And let's, let's pop down in there. We do have lights in this space, although we don't have uh, perfectly comfortable stairs at the moment. Here's our light switch. And you can see our basement environment. Now again, uh, being used as a storage space, so it's not uh, particularly uh, clean down here, but it is 140 square feet of storage space. It's uh, just about four feet tall, something like that. And uh, you could fit an awful lot of really organized storage down here if you uh, made like a run of uh, shelves along one wall and a run of shelves along the other wall. You could have an awful lot of storage space in a place like this. And these are just two different examples of things that you could build in relatively short order. This uh, particular structure that we're in right now, uh, this took me, uh, again, you know, it took me several, uh, uh, several weeks, maybe a couple of months to, to really fully put it together, but be, that was because I wasn't in a, a terrible rush. If you really wanted to build a structure like this, uh, you know, in, in a really focused way where it, this was the only thing that you were working on and you were really uh, focused on it, you would be able to put this thing together uh, easily in just a matter of a couple of weeks. And you could certainly put something together like this uh, pretty much alone. And now the only thing that I hired out on this structure for my, uh, for my purposes was I did hire somebody to pour the foundation. I, I built the foundation for the chicken coop back over here, uh, but uh, for this structure here I hired someone to pour the foundation and that really came down to just a difference in uh, you know finances. I was able to get someone to do uh, this foundation for a, what I felt was a relatively fair price. It was about 50% more than I would have uh, paid if I had done it myself and for the amount of time saved uh, I felt like that was a pretty good deal. So I hired someone to do this foundation. For the structure over there uh, it was going to be uh, it was going to cost about three to four times as much money uh, to get that foundation made uh, it, if I was going to hire somebody else to do it. And that was just, uh, I, I couldn't legitimize that in my mind. So I ended up doing the foundation myself. And the foundation did take a little bit of while, uh, a little bit of time, because uh, the way that I build with concrete blocks is that I'll, I'll do a layer and then wait for that to cure and then do another layer and wait for that to cure. And uh, this structure here was certainly a lot faster to just have somebody uh, pour it uh, all in one go. But once you have the foundation, whatever your method is uh, for getting that thing accomplished for yourself, once you have it, uh, the rest of the uh, construction for structures like this can go together really, really uh, relatively quickly. And I did the entirety of this structure uh, completely single-handed, including uh, putting up the uh, the roof rafters and, and everything. It just, it was something that I, I just did all on my own. And, and it wasn't a big burden to put something to get uh, like that together all on my own. But the reality is you may have more time than you think. And even with the small amount of time that you have, you can build things like these structures if you wanted to have some kind of a retreat location. If you wanted to just get some, some land somewhere, it doesn't even have to be road accessible. You know, this kind of thing, like this structure here, you know, all the materials for this could be hiked in. You know, hike it in one block at a time, one board at a time. I know it's a lot of work, but it also is, you get a lot of value out of it. You get a lot of satisfaction out of the feeling of creating something like this. And even if there's not a situation where you need to run off into the woods and you know retreat and hide from some kind of like an existential threat to you and your family, uh, you know, having a structure, you know, like one of these, um, uh, you know, you know, kind of mini houses. It's a great uh, opportunity to have like a project that you can do with your family that'll give you guys a sense of um, accomplishment when you've created the, the, the thing. And if you want to go on, uh, you know, vacations where you are, uh, you know, going off to the land and you know maybe you have you know access to streams or, or lakes or ponds and you want to do fishing, uh, you know, it gives you an opportunity to uh, you know engage in those kind of activities and you don't have to pay for a hotel room. So you know you're saving money right there on vacations if this is something that you guys like and you know you want to get out to an area that is you know more more natural. You'll always have a place that you can go to. Um, 
And, uh, you know, there's just so many positives that come with it. But I think the biggest one is really just that sense of empowerment that, you know, once you realize that, you know, you can single handedly or almost single handedly, you know, create something like this for yourself. Uh, it, uh, it, it kind of empowers you to try to, you know, maybe do bigger things next time. I know when I first built my first uh, house, it wasn't the size of this house here. It was um, maybe like 75% uh, the size, so three quarters the, the size of this thing, but that went so well and all the other projects that I uh, have done, you know, since then, uh, you know, between the two houses went so well, I felt a great deal of empowerment that, you know, I was able to accomplish those other projects. I think I can tackle something kind of bigger like this. You know, I went for it and it worked out really, really well. And I think you'll surprise yourself as well. So that's it. It may feel like the 11th hour, but you know, remember from the beginning of this video, I mentioned it was not it was September 1st of 2004, I believe, that I started building my house, and by Christmas of 2004, I was in it. Big things can be possible if you commit yourself to them and you're willing to put in the hard work and the sweat. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to learn more about how to build one of these structures for yourself, I have a video where I build it stick by stick, board by board, in a miniature scale. If you'd like to check out that video and see what the entire process looks like, click on this video over here.